All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video leading up to the release of the Walking Dead movie trilogy based on what we're seeing right now in Fear of the Walking Dead. In this one, we're going to give our thoughts on the Commonwealth Walker Drone Theory. And possible spoiler warning if you guys are not cut up for both Fear the Walking Dead and the original Walking Dead series leading up to the release next year for the Walking Dead movie. So this one is really cool and I definitely want to share it with you guys. This one was sent to me by email earlier this week by uh, Kylo Kenobi. Um, I guess the name is uh, Oisin Braddock uh, Henratty. So that's his full name. And uh, he did a great job of kind of breaking this one down and uh, emailing it to me. So I wanted to share it with you guys after that Fear the Walking Dead premiere because I think he's right, actually. And um, we'll see how this ends up kind of turning out and what it means for the movies. Uh, but it's pretty damn cool. Once you kind of hear what uh, what he's proposing here, I think you'll agree that, ha, that is that is kind of interesting. So in uh, Fear of the Walking Dead Season 5's premiere, we see Althea stumble upon a certain uh, interesting, um, you know, symbol and, uh, and zombie before she's kind of uh, tased, right? She she sees this, uh, this walker that uh, is decked out in gear. Uh, of course, we know from the Walking Dead comic book series that the Commonwealth soldiers have a uh, interesting type of uh, gear on in the comics it's white but in the TV series it looks like it might be black and of course this is a zombie that she finds uh, impaled there and kind of uh, stuck uh, but then later on she's kind of tased out by uh, someone wearing a black uh, kind of suit as uh, as well and um, so let's go through his explanation here of, of what he thinks is happening here and sort of uh, what I'm calling or, or what we're calling the uh, Commonwealth Walker drone idea. So basically the idea is that uh, part of the Commonwealth has kind of a mad scientist type of setup going and they could be using zombies as drones kind of programming them, putting possibly some chips in them or something, giving them these uh, these suits to kind of go out there in the world. Obviously very hard to kill because they're, uh, you know, they're decked out in this armor and uh, to go and possibly explore for them or do reconnaissance or to do different functions. Um, so here's what he said. He said, from uh, what's been shown, it looks as if the helicopter people, which we're calling the Commonwealth because of the symbol of the three uh, Boromine uh, rings, which is... You know, it's like different communities joining together, right? And then he, so he says here, the helicopter people have figured out how to use walkers to their advantage. Not exactly a cure of sorts, uh, more of a weaponization program. The idea is that they can turn infected walkers into mindless drones or soldiers for their cause. Uh, this is highly likely from the evidence in both shows. So he goes into this and he says, The Walking Dead Jadis in our first uh, look into the helicopter people uh, and shows us the kind of things they do, mainly capturing people um, and uh, infecting people and being taken away, so delivering them, such as Heath and now Rick afterwards, of course. The question of whether or not they're uh, an A or a B, talking about uh, Gabriel and some of the others. Uh, this means Rick is safe for now after being taken away as a B. Um, Looking at this with the uh, concept in mind, the helicopter people are essentially uh, receiving healthy but infected subjects, uh, and that is exactly what they need to make the best drones or soldiers. So most walkers are deranged, mangled, and can barely walk, but the infected people the group are receiving would make perfect soldiers without any physical uh, impairments. Uh, A subjects would make good soldiers or drones. B subjects uh, would be put into the workforce to keep the operation going. This walker that Althea uh, sees that is impaled is actually a walker, soldier, or drone. However, it has gone feral and gone back to the natural instincts of a walker, most likely due to the plane crash in the area disrupting the biology of the subject. Uh, there is no way that the person inside the suit would have been bitten or killed inside that suit. So I think that's an interesting observation he has here, that the suit that is that the uh, walker is wearing must have been put on uh, the walker afterwards or, or must have been wearing it when the person died uh, because there's no, you know, it's basically in pretty much perfect uh, condition here. So this is an interesting observation that, that he has. Um, 
Althea could not penetrate the armor with her dagger slash uh, knife, uh, meaning that it was turned before being put in the suit. So likely the walker was, uh, you know, or the person uh, died and became a walker and then kind of had the suit put on it possibly afterwards here or, or close to the same time. Uh, the walker is also incredibly clean and seems uh, near human, no scratch or bite marks and no uh, degrading or heavy wounds. Uh, this would make uh, sense since the Walking Dead Jada sends the group uh, instantly bit subjects with no further harm, right? So they're pretty much ready to be suited up. Uh, the Walker Soldier drone suit is full of wires and electronics. As shown, once it has been impaled and uh, the suit broken, uh, this, may be, this may help the helicopter group uh, maintain control and function over the drones and is either used to control or keep them in check. So we do see the wires. That's very, very, very good observation from him here that he notices that. So is it possible that they have put this suit on them with some electronics and some wires somehow wired into them, you know, in some way in order to control them, in order to allow uh, some controller, maybe remotely or, um, you know, in some way to kind of uh, guide them around and make, you know, make them drones or make them do their bidding for them. Uh, kind of cool, right? And now it says here, uh, now on to the walker that changes everything. Fear the Walking Dead co-runner Ian Goldberg teases that there's something big coming to the Walking Dead spinoff next season that could be a potential game changer uh, for the rest of the Walking Dead universe, stating uh, there will be one walker in particular that will open a universe of possibilities for our storytelling. Now, this is not talking about the impaled walker with uh, links to the helicopter group but is much bigger. Uh, this is what he's saying now. So he's saying that uh, this is the fully operational and working walker drone or soldier that tasered and captured Althea. So he's predicting here that the the uh, the person in the suit that tased and captured Althea is actually a uh, walker. So it's actually not a person, but it's a drone, right? So that it's been basically programmed or commanded to do this and has done this and uh but is actually not a live person underneath so we'll see if maybe that's uh, if he's right about that uh the helmet covers the whole head or face for a reason uh it hides the fact that there is no walker or that there is a walker under the suit and not a not a person right um it is impossible to see through the helmet but walkers do not need to see as they can use their other senses and uh, the help of the elect with the help of the electronic suit uh just watch how an unnatural the soldier moves when capturing althea it's almost robotic and very zoned out. Uh, it puts its arm out before going in uh, very robotically. So then he sums up his theory and he basically says that the infected subjects that Jadis and many others have been sending this group are being used as drone slash soldiers in electronic suits. This explains the bite uh, before being taken in the unusual and unnatural way the last soldier moves in Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, the biggest clue is not showing the face uh, of the last soldier and having the first one be very clean yet turned in an impenetrable suit. I also think that the uh, the electronics or the wires that she finds are also kind of a good hint of that too, which is kind of cool, right? So, And that's basically it for the theory. Uh, I think he's posted it on Reddit. He said he was going to, so you can find it out there probably elsewhere. But I decided I'd share it. You can take credit for that in the comments below. I think it's a great theory. I think that's very cool. You know, at least we're getting kind of the uh, um, the circuits going here and kind of the uh, <laughs> the uh, ways of thinking here. They did say they were going to introduce a new kind of walker. Now, I thought it might be something that we saw in Z Nation, like uh, maybe with the radiation or the uh, this kind of thing, uh, maybe like a, you know, a radioactive zombie or something like this. I think that's what a lot of us kind of thought. Uh, but maybe that's not what they're doing. Maybe this idea, maybe he's right. Maybe he's got it to exact here. And that's uh, that's what we're seeing. I'm going to watch again the, uh, the clip when uh, Althea gets tased and kind of pay more close attention to the type of uh, maneuvering. It's kind of hard to see because it's got the suit on, right? Uh, but sort of the way that the musculature moves when she gets uh, when she gets taste or however it is, and if it's more like you know, <laughs> kind of like more like kind of you know uh, uh, Walker esque or, or kind of you know like like slacked or something, not quite right, not like human esque you know type of fluid movement, right? Uh, more puppet puppety type of, of movement, then that could be very interesting. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, this theory in the comments below. I thought it was a great theory and I wanted to share it uh, with you guys. 
uh, uh, for today because I just thought it was really cool. Uh, I guess this was the lowest premiere in terms of ratings that Fear the Walking Dead has has had, just under 2 million U.S. viewers. But I don't think it's a bad thing because, personally, I thought it was a pretty damn good premiere. And then in addition to that, also, I mean, you know, it's coming at a certain time. Game of Thrones just ended. Game of Thrones is really done now. So even though they'll do some future kind of prequels and stuff like that, you know, they did a smart thing to avoid, you know, competing on Sundays with Game of Thrones when it's on. So I think they chose, they made a good decision to release it this time. I think it was a pretty good premiere. And it's probably going to do about as good as it can. Uh, the market is changing with regards to Walking Dead and what people kind of want. And uh, AMC's producing more Walking Dead, which I'm really happy for the movies, the original series. Series, and I'm also enjoying Fear 2, so I'm happy with everything they're doing, but um, you know, I do see it as kind of a shrinking market. So we'll see if maybe the, uh, the Rick movies and what they do next year can kind of give it a boost back into the right direction here. Uh, but you know, to have all the different universes kind of come together with different different parts of the Commonwealth is also kind of cool, a neat idea. And uh, now that we're seeing it in fear, it actually makes fear, you know, if what he's saying here and his theory is, is true, it kind of makes fear more important because then they're putting stuff in fear that kind of gives you a hint for the movies and gives you some info on what you can see in the movies. And then uh, it gives you even more reason to watch fear than just, um, well, you know, uh, Morgan's there and Dwight's going to be there, right? Uh, and Alicia's still there, right? And Strand, so... Yeah, so it gives you a bit more. And the other characters, too. I don't want to I don't want to downplay any of the other characters. But you guys know what I'm saying, right? You know, some of those. Like, it gives you more of a pull or more of a draw than just, just that because you get some of this more info. So we'll do a few uh, questions for today for fear, uh, mainly focused on fear because, you know, I want to get back into the usual kind of, uh, you know, swing of things here uh, with fear and, you know, be making some more videos for fear, even though it's, again, it's it's a controversial show. Some people still hate, hate it very much. But you know what? If they're going to start to include more stuff connecting to the Rick stuff, then and the movies and give us some more info and fear I think it adds even more value to it and, uh, and it can be it can be good uh, and whether or not we'll see Althea again is a good question right uh, Rowdy here says um, do you think we'll see uh, Althea return on Fear of the Walking Dead uh, or maybe do you think we'll see her possibly in the uh, the Rick movie uh, that'd be really cool right you know if she doesn't return on Fear of the Walking Dead which I do like the character I think it'd be cool if she did return but if she doesn't and we end up seeing her instead in um uh, the Rick movie or something, again, see, that could be a really cool way that they're kind of bringing the universe together. So maybe Rick has a couple characters like Jadis and some of the, and Heath possibly that he'll see at uh, possibly maybe an evil section of the Commonwealth or something. Uh, maybe the others don't know about. So the Commonwealth can be sectioned off sort of in different groups. And maybe there could be some parts of it, like Georgie, if she's part of it, where she's a good person and she's good. And then there could be kind of an evil section that's doing this droning stuff. And then there could be other spots, too, that maybe are in between, right? So some good... So so some parts of the Commonwealth that are evil, some parts that are good, some parts in between. And if you bring Althea into the movies as well, we'll see. Maybe she'll just come back this year and Morgan and the others will be able to get her back and save her. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they do. But it would be kind of cool to see like a character kind of cross into the movies from fear just to give it a representation from that other part of The Walking Dead to kind of give it that more cohesive uh, type of uh, connection. That would be kind of cool, right? Um, Nick Frystock said, uh, I watched it. Uh, also, but they but they won't be back on uh, until the fear finale. So fear of the walk or for Talking Dead. Uh, I don't know why. Do you remember if they did Talking Dead all uh, fear episodes in the past? Just wondering. So to clarify for everybody, I've gotten your feedback now from it. It sounds like uh, Talking Dead was after the uh, Fear of the Walking Dead Season 5 premiere, but they're not going to be doing it uh, every episode like they usually do. Uh, and yes, they do usually do that. Usually they do a, an episode of Talking Dead after every new episode of Fear. But now they're not doing that. Now they're going to be doing it just for the uh, mid-season finale and maybe the premieres going forward. Will that change? Maybe it will. But, um, you know, I think that's kind of unfortunate in some ways. I mean, there's certain times when Talking Dead is on where it's like, oh, yeah, you can skip it, whatever. But, uh, you know, I mean, man, there's some times when it can be cool, you know, if they can if they could do a Talking Dead and explain some of the stuff in the episodes and do that kind of stuff. is It's not a bad thing to have on. You know, I'd prefer it over Nosferatu or something. But, hey, you know what? If they're not going to do it until um, the mid-season finale, then... Okay, at least if they do it for the mid-season finale and the premieres, and that's not bad. 
uh, and we'll just kind of see in the future how that goes. So I'll also be interested to see if they do a Talking Dead after the Rick movies. Uh, I think they probably will. Uh, I would imagine they would. Uh, maybe one before and one after, like a premiere party or something. You know how they do for sports. They do the opening kickoff show or whatever. Maybe they do a Talking Dead before the movie and one after or something to kind of get everybody excited and ready. It's not a bad idea. They should think about that. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. So, so yeah, I, I'm sad that Talking Dead won't be on every week after Fear like it usually is. But, hey, you know what? Uh, premieres, mid-season finales is not bad either, right? Um, you know, it's just it's just what it is. It's not. It's never going to have the same kind of demand the original series uh, did or has. And I don't think we should expect it to. Um, you know, it, hopefully it can keep going with a couple million uh, viewers per episode. And hopefully that's enough for AMC to keep doing it. I, I hope it is. And I enjoy Fear. And, and I hope they don't cancel it just yet. Uh, if they do have to do something like that, then I really hope they bring those characters into another Walking Dead property. The movies or the, uh, well, probably the original series makes more sense. A um, couple more for today. Being a Dork says, uh, what if this Commonwealth uh, community, uh, or what if this is the Commonwealth community, and they bring uh, the movies, Fear, and the Walking Dead all together in one huge event uh, to fight uh, them uh, like Avengers Endgame style. Uh, that makes sense, right? I think that makes sense. I think that could be really cool. And uh, you could see everyone reunited. You could, like, maybe in the third movie or something, you have, you know, all your your fear group united with uh, Rick and the movie, uh, small group. And then you have the original group kind of join with them all together. And you have kind of all your heroes kind of come together for one epic kind of conclusion. And maybe that's Rick's end there if you do that there at some point. Um, Man, that would be just like a Walking Dead dream come true, right? <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up with that one for today. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, how do you interpret the uh, the walkers that we've seen? The Commonwealth connections between Fear and the movies. How are you feeling about them kind of giving Fear a little bit more here that connects to the movies and kind of bringing the Walking Dead universe kind of more closer together uh, with the possibility of Althea somehow being connected with Rick and, and everything we're seeing here coming together? Or do you think the theory it totally doesn't make sense at all and it's totally wrong? I thought it was really good. I was like, wow, that explains a lot. Uh, maybe he's got it. You know, Maybe Kylo's got it here. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's That sounds right to me, man. It really does. Anyway, if you like the, uh, the video, please thumb it up below. Um, you can share, you can favorite, and subscribe to the bottom left if you're new. That's it for this one. See you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.